Good day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, market is down slightly again, so we got up close to that. I think we were at 2.7 trillion there, now we're down to 2.5 trillion. So the market has continued to retrace. And look, I did say I was expecting Bitcoin to keep coming down a little bit, sort of 58,000, maybe even 57,500. We'll have to wait and see whether it gets there. But look, it's a bit of a mixed bag. While some things aren't doing good, <laughs> other things are doing amazing. Now, I don't own any SHIB. I'm not buying any SHIB. It's just pumped up way too much. You know, congratulations to anyone who can get on it and make really good money. I just, yeah, I, I wouldn't do it. I did buy uh, some dip today, uh, and that was XRP. And I did that with some profits that I took from Secret Network Token. And as you uh, know it, I took profits from Secret Network uh, and it's continued to go. But I only took a very small amount, so I'm all right with that. And XRP, uh, I still think is a an okay buy at least at a dollar. Still waiting to see what happens with all the you know regulation stuff that's got to happen with the SEC. Uh, and again, not everyone believes in uh, XRP and you know it being a banker's coin and all the rest of it. But hey. I like it. I think it's going to do really well when it gets cleared up. I do think a lot of banks and that will probably adopt it. But, you know, time will tell. It's never financial advice, as I always say. Uh, and that kind of dollar mark. I think I bought it about a dollar three, though, a dollar four. So it's come down a little bit since then. And again, look, if it keeps going down, then I'm not too worried. I don't think we're in a bear market. As I said yesterday, this, there's a few things that are going on. Number one, it's big players. They're, they're liquidating all the longs. Because everyone gets too excited, boom, and as soon as Bitcoin sells off, everything else sells off as well and drops in price. That's the way it goes. you got to remember, we have options coming up at the end of this week as well. So in like sort of two days time for the States, uh, tomorrow for us, there's usually a sell-off right before the end of the month uh, trading and options. And so th that's the combination, I believe, of what has led to this. Again, people just got too long, too bullish. Everyone thought, this is it, we're going to the moon from here, and it doesn't work that easy. What you need to remember, and this is a bit of a contradiction, but hear me out, it is and isn't as simple as buy and hold. It is as simple as buy and hold, but this part that's not so simple about that is being able to actually maintain that buy and hold through this kind of stuff because this is what scares a lot of new buyers out you know new investors they just go oh my god it's crashing it's going to go down even lower and so they'll sell and most probably most likely at a loss so that's the thing it really is as simple as buy and hold if you're in good projects you just buy and hold the same as same as stocks no real difference other than these are a whole lot more volatile than you that's all it is but if you buy and hold good stocks, stocks go up and down and they can be quite volatile for stocks. You know, they can go up, you know, I don't even know, I don't invest in stocks that much, but they can go up percentages and down percentages. It's just, it doesn't look so bad because it's a stock and they just move gradually and slowly. Crypto doesn't do that. So really, do your research, find good projects, you know, scale into them, you know, hopefully you've understood stood charts and cycles and worked out where we are. And then it's as simple as buy and hold. You may have to go through a really brutal bear market. But if you hold, the good projects will eventually come back to those prices and continue to go on. Just like stocks, you can buy a stock at an all-time high and then it goes down. It's probably not going to go down 50% or 90%, although, you know, some stocks have done that, you know, in the past, Amazon and things like that. But eventually, they sort themselves out because they're good and they just go up. It's about holding for long enough. But again, that really is the hard part. It's as simple as that, you know, buy and hold, but it's not so simple because when you see corrections, and this isn't even that big a correction, but people get panicked and spooked and they sell. And particularly with the leverage. I don't like leverage, but I understand why people use it. And a lot of this was uh, the longs getting you know sorted out. And again, because you know future CMEs and things like that are coming to a close in the next day or two. And every time, it's been like almost clockwork, you can see a bit of a pullback on that Friday, uh, just before the Friday. And so that's Thursday today here in Australia, uh, Wednesday, uh, sort of yeah, evening, morning, uh, and that's what I believe is coming right now. Anyway, let's move on. 
bit of volume there. So people are buying up stuff though, and a lot of it's probably going to Sheeb. Again, look at the Bitcoin price. This was at nearly sixty-four thousand dollars, and yeah. That's crypto for you. Gas prices are super high. Again, people jumping in and out of stable coins and doing all sorts of stuff just really got the market spooked and that's why the gas prices are so high. All right, what's performed well in the last 24 hours? I'm gonna say Sheeb's probably done the best. Look at it, it's still going 70%. People are just flocking to it. There's gonna be such a big crash in that. I just get the feeling like it's gonna be brutal. All right, one inch is still pumping. It's been doing well. Safe Moon, uh, Engine Coin, Matic, nice. Back to a dollar eighty. Got to get it back to the two dollar sort of mark. Ave making a bit of a move, only small. But again, these are the movers. The market is down three point eight percent, so it's most likely going to be not quite so pretty for the rest of the market. And now we can see. Look at all this double digit you know losses almost right across the board just double digit double digit double digit double digit still going we have to get down to what was it 26 before we get into single digits and then still a number of high single digit losses so again it's a good retracement and it again this is big uh again whales and that playing their games and it's not so much games it's just you know a game's not a good word but it's just things that they do to make more money and it's the noobs, you know, the, you know, again, they call it the dumb money uh, and retail money. It's not all retail though, but the new money is what I like to call it. They just, they're not ready. As soon as something goes down, they'll sell for a loss and say, no, nah, it's all right. This is going to keep going down and I'll buy in cheaper. Sometimes they get it right. Most of the time they get it wrong. All right, let's go and have a look at the Bitcoin chart. Ton of good stories that I uh, found that I want to bring to you as well. So here we go. Boom. Look at that. What is that? What kind of retracement have we had so far? There we go, we've had a sort of 13% uh, percent retracement over the last few days. That's not so bad. Again, considering, I mean, how much have we sort of come up? I mean, look at that. It's a 60% retracement since the 30th of September. That's only a month we had a 60% not retracement, sorry, 60% gain. So, you know, a 15% pullback in a 60% gain, that's actually not so bad at all. That's kind of what you'd expect. Like I said, you know, whatever you've gone up by, you can generally expect a retracement of about a third of that. So again, a third of 16 is not quite 15%. Uh, it's about 20%. Hence why I said I wouldn't be surprised if Bitcoin comes down a little bit lower. I'd be thinking around 57 a uh, thousand sort of 500 uh, and that will probably get us to around about a 20 percent retracement from a 64 65 percent uh increase there you go that's around about a third and again that's just a very rough guide that's not an exact science uh and again never financial advice just my personal opinion from things i've seen and noticed uh being in the space uh for four years going on sort of five years now so yeah really i'd be looking over the next few days uh, for Bitcoin to again come down to fifty-seven and a half thousand, could come down lower. Could come down to sort of fifty-five and a half thousand. We gotta, you know, find is this going to be the stop or is it going to be a little bit lower down here? I'm gonna say somewhere between fifty-seven and a half and fifty-five and a half thousand is where I'd most likely expect to see it. Because also what you'll know is that'll probably be somewhere over around about here in the next few days. Let's say around about Friday. And then once options is done, we probably bounce from around about here and then start to go up again. Now, it's not going to just rocket straight up, although it could, but we'll just have to wait and see. All right, a couple of stories. Hacks still going on. So Cream Finance hacked for $130 million in another flash loan attack. So again, just be very careful out there in the space. There's so many new fangled dangle products always coming out. I've said this a million times, not a million times, but I've definitely said it a few times. Consider yourself like a VC when you're in investing in cryptocurrencies. Everything is so new. Nothing is really a finished project. They're all still in beta. You know, they say they're kind of finished, but not quite there. So again, you're like a VC. You're investing in things that aren't complete, don't have years of history. It absolutely could go to zero. And particularly with this DeFi kind of stuff, like, you know, they're always big. Uh, Cream Finance, I just, I don't know if I'd want to put my money in something with the name Cream Finance, but look, 
it is what it is and I feel sorry for the people who've lost their money uh, and you know it was a hack so at least it wasn't you know a, a rug pull but 130 million dollars someone's uh, out of pocket so yeah be careful in this space all right investment firm this is scary uh, but also interesting so an investment firm aims to launch a Bitcoin bear ETF that shorts Bitcoin futures now look if you pick this and time this right it could be great you could make a, a killing but what do they say about uh, Bitcoin don't short it don't bet against it like yes there's about a year where uh, again this is if previous history plays out there's a year where you can do really well on this ETF but outside of that year you're going to get hammered you don't bet against Bitcoin uh, and you know we'll have to wait and see now that the institutional money is here they will probably use this uh, to short it at times and then to try and buy in uh, cheaper and all the rest of it so we just got to be careful and keep our eye out uh, and again that's why for me I'm you know I'm an investor I can handle the volatility ups and downs I like to buy into things in the red and again for Bitcoin 50% uh, discount anywhere from sort of 30% down to 50% I think that's going to be the golden ratio going from here forwards depending if Bitcoin again has this massive blow off top and somehow gets to 250 plus thousand uh, dollars at the end of this cycle and it's in the next kind of few months then I think we absolutely could see a 70 you know to maybe even 80% retracement but if we get to a blow off top of about 150,000 let's say I don't think you're going to see a 50 plus percent retracement we could but that then brings us back to about sort of 75,000 so yeah maybe still back to about sort of 60,000 50,000 we'll have to wait and see but this will be interesting to see how many people want to get on get in on this uh, ETF because uh, again shorting Bitcoin it rarely ever pays not saying never some people some people sorry would have made a ton of money from shorting Bitcoin at good times but I'd say most people have made more money by going again I don't want to say long because I don't like leverage trading but unfortunately yeah, buying into uh, the upside of Bitcoin and the crypto markets in general all right uh, WWE so world wrestling they are getting into the NFT space and they have gone with uh, creative labs so they're the same people that came out with the uh, NFTs for Mars Singer over in the States and things like that. So again, everyone is coming to this space in one way, shape or another. Voyager Digital, they have partnered up with the Dallas Mavericks. So they're going to be now their brokerage firm for the Dallas Mavericks. So, you know, Dallas Mavericks are owned by Mark Cuban. You know, he's been into crypto for a while and they've been accepting crypto payments. But now they've uh, partnered up with uh Voyager. <laughs> Voyager Digital. So again, the space just continues to grow and grow and grow. And plenty of big business are getting on board. Bank of Spain, look, they're coming out and they're now giving clarity uh, for virtual asset service providers, uh, crypto related companies. Uh, again, getting that regulation that, you know, America's still waiting to get and a lot of other places around the world are also still waiting to get. But it is slowly coming. So yes, this, you know, retracement can be scary. But these kind of retracements happen in the stock market as well. They're just not as big. They're smaller. But that's what you need to remember. Your gains will be less in the stock market, but your losses will also be less in the stock market. So you need to work out what's best for you. Do you have the, you know, the risk appetite to invest in cryptos? But if you are here and you're still just struggling with the volatility, that's part of crypto. That is the way it is. You know, you can't have the big upsides without the big downsides. But look at what is happening around the world. It's, you know, particularly if you're getting fudded out by someone's going to ban it and, you know, over-regulate it. Look, they probably will regulate certain things really hard, particularly stable coins. I think will get hit pretty hard by regulation worldwide. But really good cryptos that are legit uh, and have real world use cases, I don't think they're going to be hit too hard. They are transformative. Yes, regulation will come. We can't do anything about that. KYC is coming. Uh, Anti-money laundering, you know, uh, making sure that, you know, nothing's being used to fund terrorism and all that kind of stuff. That is a guarantee. We won't be able to get away with that, uh, like it or not. But the space is not going to get banned and crushed, which is a lot of what a lot of people, once 
you know, thought, and a lot of new people coming to the space are still worried about that. Uh, again, never any, you know, sort of financial advice, but I don't see crypto getting banned. I really don't. Certain cryptos and dodgy ones, yep, they're going to have all sorts of issues, and particularly stable coins, they're going to be heavy, heavily regulated. But I think most governments in that can see that number one, people want crypto, and number two, how transformative it really is going to be. All right, the CFTC and the SEC are trying to fight over control of crypto. So we saw yesterday that the Treasury were looking at giving SEC the power to be in uh, control of stable coins. Well, the CFTC has come out and said that they want to actually have the rest of the crypto space. So here, mere days after the Bloomberg, Bloomberg report suggested that the Treasury Department was set to give the Securities and Exchange Commission the bulk of responsibility over regulating stable coins, its sister agency, the CFTC, is making a play to be the primary cop on the beat for the whole crypto sector. I would rather a new, a new entity, a new governing body be created uh, to deal with crypto, but... It is what it is, and I guess we'll have to wait and see. You know, you'd think it'd be the other way around, that the CFTC would be in control of stable coins because it's not a commodity. Uh, and then again, the SEC maybe be in charge of the refs to the crypto space. So it feels like it's, you know, back to front and all the rest of it. We'll have to wait and see. Someone's going to have to have control of it and regulate it. So interesting times ahead. <coughs> oh, excuse me. All right, Litecoin. I've been worried about Litecoin uh, and every now and then you hear something like this and it makes you feel a little bit better but I just don't know if it's enough for me to stay in Litecoin really long term it just hasn't performed anywhere near as well as what I thought it would but I digress Litecoin transactions near all-time high after gaining ground in consumer finance so the number of Litecoin transactions has rebounded to over 140,000 in recent days, falling close to a $100,000 mark in early October. Three days prior, the Litecoin Foundation tweeted the launch of its Litecoin Visa debit card uh, powered by fintech firm Unbanked. So Litecoin, can it survive? I mean, they are integrating with Cardano, or at least they've been talking about it. It's supposed to happen at some stage. They really do need to, you know, do some work uh, to have that longevity. But again, that they're one of the four coin of four. Uh, you can call them golden coins: Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and Bitcoin Cash. They've been sort of given the green light now. Bitcoin and Ethereum have been deemed not securities. Don't know so much about Litecoin yet or Bitcoin Cash, but it feels like they're probably going to lean that way. And PayPal and again, you know, Visa and MasterCard and everyone, they're getting onto those cryptos. So Litecoin, while it's not performing that well at the moment, it may still be able to come back, but I'm, I'm not fully sold on it. I do own some Litecoin, but yeah, it's been one of my worst performers and look you know stellar lumens is another one we'll have to wait and see it you know had a lot going for it but something that i keep in mind is that maybe certain coins are being kept down so the big end of town can you know get a hold of them uh, and litecoin could be one again because it looks like it's been kind of given the green light bitcoin cash as well not so much ethereum and bitcoin because everyone's sort of all over those now that's a bit of a kind of conspiracy theory sort of thing and i don't like to get into conspiracy theories but i'm just hoping that that might be it that the big end of town are really trying to get a you know positions in litecoin and bitcoin cash i don't have any bitcoin cash so you know take that uh, for what it is but maybe they're trying to get you know, as big a position as they can for when these things do finally get opened up to everyone. Because if the masses come to crypto, they will go through things like PayPal, uh, Visa, MasterCard and things like that. And if they're offering Litecoin, then that probably means a lot of people are going to get into Litecoin. But that is not guaranteed. We will have to wait and see. All right, Citigroup CEA says digital assets will be part of the future financial system. So again, even the old, you know, the old traditional finance even they can see what's coming and that's you know they don't have a choice they will simply get left behind if they don't uh on board this kind of stuff i can't remember which bank it is now i think it was hsbc have been really sort of anti-crypto 
and I can tell you their tune is going to change. They will have no choice. Any bank that doesn't get on board, they'll be done for. I think banks, they're going to struggle into the future. They really are. Or at least they will be different to how they are now. They, they're basically going to be automated programs. And again, I don't know if they'll be able to catch up to things like Aave and Compound and all the rest of it because I think they will be sort of the new banks in the future. But don't get me wrong, I'm not saying banks are going to be gone in five to ten years, but I think 50 to 100, yeah, I think they struggle to be around because everything will be automated. Banks will basically be, again, it's a program uh, and there'll be, you know, DAOs, uh, decentralized organized decentralized autonomous organizations that you know kind of run those things and they will be who you go to for when you're having problems and things like that but again that's that's way down the line but that's where i th see things going i think you know i don't know if i'll be around to see those kind of days but you know our children and our children's children probably will see a day like that is my gut feeling all right Bitcoin fund worth 200 million gets green light uh, over in Dubai. So again, all these kind of ETFs and ETPs are going to come and you name it. They are just now popping up all around the world. So again, try not to get shaken out by the movements of the market. This space is growing and it is starting to grow quite fast. But again, as I said earlier, it really is as easy as just buy and hold. But unfortunately, it's not as easy as just buy and hold because it's the volatility that will catch people. Now, there is most likely going to be another bear market. And, you know, we don't know how bad this bear market could be, but it's going to be bad for most people who just haven't, who haven't been through one and can't handle it. It could be, you know, unfortunately, people will buy in near the top. That's how it just always works. And then they will panic sell as it goes down. But it's easy to say, I won't. But when you've put $10,000 into something, and again, it's not so much the, va the dollar amount, but if you've put you know, basically everything you could afford into something and you watch it drop by 30%, you're panicking. You see it at 50% down, your human psychology, people will sell. They're not going to be able to hold through those kind of lows. And you can guarantee at 49%, 45%, is probably where it turns around. So they only had five more percent to go to the bottom uh, and then it would have been on the way up. Now that's in Bitcoin, you know, altcoins, different story. They can drop 70, 80, you know, 99% and most people cannot handle that kind of volatility. Unfortunately, they will get wrecked and that's markets in general. It's a sad state of affairs for everyone. All right, look, that's it for me. These are the stories that I found that I thought were pretty interesting and again, just help remind me of where this space is, where it's going, and to not get so caught up in this kind of stuff. Yep, it hurts, uh, and you know, it's even hard for me to watch my you know portfolio go up and down the way it does sometimes, but I can tell you, what hurt more was when my portfolio was here, and I watched it come down to here. I can tell you, even though I've been in the space for a really long time, uh, even I was thinking, oh, how, did I get this right? Like, you know, uh, is this a real bear market? Because remembering, I started to buy back in sort of uh, around about $39,000. Uh, and again, I thought it was going to bounce from around about here, 40000 But it kept going. When I see it wicking down to, you know, sub 30000 even I was worried. But I held my conviction, again, for all these kind of stories and listening to people and reading tweets and all sorts of stuff. I stuck to my guns and now here we are. Now we're waiting to see the dead cat bounce is gone. The dead cat bounce should have been somewhere around about here if it was going to be a dead cat bounce and it did look like it might play out. But then again went to here and even this could be a dead cat bounce. But this is now the possibility of are we at a double top uh, and will this roll over? Again, that's, that's not what I'm thinking, but just something to keep in mind. But at the moment, I'm not so sure. Again, it really is that 57 and a half to $55,500 level that I wouldn't be surprised for Bitcoin to come down to over the next kind of couple of days for the options to end. But I get the feeling like if it doesn't happen over the weekend, next Monday, we'll start to see more upside. Again, never financial advice, just my personal opinion. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that gain train at the moment, unless you're in Shiba Renu. And if you're all in on that and making squillions, congratulations to you. And I'll see you next time.